This is a review of some basic pH problems. Uh, some are a review of general chemistry, but some of them uh, approach the kinds of problems that we're going to address here in um, biochemistry. So um, I will uh, demonstrate some examples here. First is a simple uh, solution of a strong acid. We know hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. So we know that because it's a strong acid, every time hydrochloric acid dissociates, every mole of hydrochloric acid that dissociates um, you get one mole one mole of hydrogen ions for every one mole of hydrochloric acid that dissociates so that means we get 5.0 times 10 to the minus 4th moles molar hydrogen ions in the solution. We know that the pH is equal to the negative of the log of the concentration of hydrogen ions. So that's going to be the negative of the log of 5 Point zero times ten to the minus fourth, which is equal to negative of negative three point three zero. So we get a positive pH of three point three zero. Now, note, right? The pH, or the, the hydrochloric acid concentration was given to two significant figures, and so the log answer should be to two significant figures, but in a log number, it's only the numbers after the decimal point that are significant. So this has two significant figures, and this also has two significant figures for those that are paying attention to significant figures. Okay, so now we have a solution of a strong base, right? With a strong base, let's go blue for base. Again, it is a strong base, so when sodium hydroxide dissociates, we get one mole of hydroxide ions. every one mole of sodium hydroxide that dissolves and so we end up with 8.0 times 10 to the minus 5 molar hydroxide ions but for pH we want hydrogen ions so this is where we have to remember the KW, right? The KW is equal to the concentration of hydrogen ions in a solution times the concentration of hydroxide ions in a solution that are in equilibrium with those hydrogen ions, right? This is an equilibrium constant for the dissociation of water in water and that is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14th. Right? So, if we substitute this number in here, we can get a solution for the hydrogen ion concentration. So, the concentration of hydrogen ions um, times the 
point zero times ten to the minus five equals one point zero times ten to the minus fourteenth. If we divide both sides by this number, then we get the concentration of hydrogen ions is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14 divided by 8.0 times 10 to the minus 5 and we get 1.25 times 10 to the minus 10 as I try to go off my board. So that tells us then that the concentration of hydrogen ions is equal to 1.25 times 10 to the minus 10 so the pH is equal to the negative of the log of that same number, 1.25 times 10 to the minus 10. Hmm. So the pH is equal to 9.90. Okay, here we have a solution of an acid, and we're given the pH. So, the question is, what's the hydrogen ion concentration of the solution? So, let's see. We know that the pH is equal to the negative of the log of the concentration of the hydrogen ions. But we're trying to find this number, right? So we have to remember a couple of our log rules. One, that is, if we say that the log of A is equal to B, what we're really saying is 10 raised to the b power is equal to a, right? So, if the log of the hydrogen ion concentration is the negative of the pH, right, if we move that, right, the negative, oh, helps if I grab a pen, the negative of the pH is equal to the log of the concentration of the hydrogen ion. You see the relationship between this equation, log is equal to a number, log is equal to a number. So, if we come over here, we can say that 10 raised to the negative pH is equal to the concentration of the hydrogen ion. Or in this case, 10 raised to minus 4.6 is equal to the concentration of the hydrogen ion in this solution, which is equal to... 2.5 times 10 to the minus 5 molar. Okay, now, a couple of notes here. One, this is an intermediate calculation. Now, we have one significant figure in the concentration we were given. Right? And we have one significant figure in the... Um, 
pH, because remember, it's a log number, so only the decimal number is significant. We've reported our answer to two significant figures. Now, this is a fairly common concentration, and this is an intermediate calculation. We don't want to round this number yet, because we may have to use it in other parts of the problems. Note, this is part A of a longer problem. Okay? Now, another thing to look at. Note this concentration. If we're writing that, that would be 2 times 10 to the minus 2 molar. Now note, the concentration of our hydrogen ions are much lower than the concentration of our initial acid. So that tells us immediately that we are dealing with a weak acid and that there will be an equilibrium when we're done. So, let's advance to the next problem, part of the problem. Okay. The pH of that solution was measured at that. We, are, we already figured that. Calculate the acid dissociation constant, Ka, and the pKa for this acid. If it's a weak acid, then we know there's going to be an equilibrium. So, we know that we have an equilibrium situation where we have the acid dissolved in water. Because my pen is so thick, I'm not going to try to indicate that, but we know it's dissolved in water. And when we dissolve it in water, it's going to dissociate to make some hydrogen ions, and it's going to be in equilibrium with the hydrogen ions in the water and with its conjugate base anion in the water. Okay? And so, if we set our initial conditions, initial, change, and equilibrium, we know that initially there was 0 0.02 of this, there was 0 of this, and there was 0 of that. But our calculation previously showed us that at equilibrium there's 2.5 times 10 to the minus 5 molar of the hydrogen ions. Which means that this had to go up by 2.5 times 10 to the minus 5 molar. This had to go up by 2.5 times 10 to the minus 5 molar. And this had to go down by that 2 Point five times 10 to the minus 5 molar. And so now, once we reach equilibrium, we're going to say that this is approximately 0 0.02 because this number is so much smaller than this number, it's not going to change much. And this one now is going to be 2.5 times 10 to the minus 5. Right? So now we should be able to find the Ka. The Ka is equal to the concentration of hydrogen ions, the concentration of the conjugate base anion, divided by the concentration of undissociated acid. And so that is going to be 2.5 times 10 to the minus 5 times 2.5 times 10. Whoop! We've got some color here. Minus 5 divided by 
zero point zero two. Right? Which is going to so the Ka when we do that math is equal to three point one two five times ten to the minus ninth. Now again everything we've had up until now would be one significant figure so really our best reported number to one significant figure is going to be three times ten to the minus ninth our pka right that p always means the negative log of whatever the number is that's specified there so our pKa is going to be the negative log of our 3.125 times 10 to the minus 9th. So that is going to be equal to Ooh, a number I didn't calculate ahead of time. 3.125 times 10 to the minus 9th. Uh, we take the log of that. We get minus 8.505. So the negative of the log would be 8.5. And that would be the best way to report that answer. Okay, now let's look at a buffer problem. For some reason, students have a lot of problems with buffers. But buffers really come down to a few simple things. That is, one, buffers are always a mixture of some kind of weak acid and its conjugate base in the same solution. And it's the ratio of how many moles of acid to how many moles of base, or what's the concentration of the acid to the concentration of the base that determines the final pH of the buffer. Okay, so let's try to move forward here. So, we've got acetic acid, which I'm going to abbreviate H-O-A-C. Right? That's acetic acid. That will make my writing a little shorter. And one of the things we can find is that the Ka of acetic acid is equal to 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. We have to know the Ka. Okay. Now, the other thing it tells us is that the pH is 5.4. So, from that, right, based on the problem we just did, we know that the concentration of hydrogen ions is equal to 10 to the negative 5 point four which is equal to four times ten to the minus six molar. Right? We know that. Okay, so we know that our Ka is one point eight times 10 to the minus 5, and that that is equal to the concentration of hydrogen ions times the concentration of acetate ions divided by the concentration of undissociated acetic acid. But this number is this number, right? These are the hydrogen ions that we know are in equilibrium in the solution. So this is the hydrogen ion concentration when this system reaches equilibrium. So these hydrogen ions 
are these hydrogen ions. So we substitute that in there and we get that 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5 is equal to, and I'm going to write this slightly differently. I'm going to bring the hydrogen ions out in front here. So we have 4 times 10 to the minus 6, 6. times, and this is important. Remember I said the ratio is important? The concentration of the acetate ion and the concentration of acetic acid. Right? So, we do the division. 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5 divided by 4 times 10 to the minus 6 is equal to 4.5 and that is equal to the concentration of acetate ion divided by the concentration of undissociated acetic acid. Now my personal preference is to use the Ka expression to solve this. There's an alternate way of doing it that's taught in a number of books, and that is to use the Henderson Hasselbach. equation. And the Henderson-Hasselbach equation is this, that the pH is equal to the pKa plus the log of our ratio. Right? So it just uses the log numbers representing these two numbers and the log of the ratio we're looking for. So mathematically these are the same things. The Henderson-Hasselbach equation is just a log transformation of the Ka expression. You can get the same information from both. From my perspective we can never forget the Ka expression because it's a, an equilibrium constant, something we're used to dealing with. The Henderson-Hasselbach equation is something new, something we have to memorize. Students often have trouble remembering what the sign is that goes right there. And so there are just, I think, more ways to make errors using the Henderson-Hasselbach equation than there are using the simple Ka expression. But in this case, it's up to students' choice what they use. Now, what we have here is a situation where we, we have created an equation relating our two important features, the amount of base and the amount of acid. So let's start. Okay, so we just found out that 4.5 is equal to the concentration of our acetate divided by the concentration of our undissociated acetic acid. We also know from the problem that the concentration of acetic acid or of acetate plus the concentration of acetic acid is equal to zero point one zero zero molar. That's given. 
that gives us two equations this equation and this equation both in the same two unknowns concentration of acetate ion concentration of acetic acid two equations two unknowns we can solve for both unknowns so starting on this left equation we can multiply it out so 4 0.5 times the concentration of acetic acid is equal to the concentration of acetate ion. Right? But that concentration of acetate ion there is the same as the concentration of acetate ion there. So, if we substitute, we have 4.5 times the concentration of acetic acid. Right? Now, plus 1 times the concentration of acetic acid is equal to 0. 1, 0, 0 molar. Five point five times the concentration of acetic acid is equal to zero point one zero zero molar. So our concentration of acetic acid in this mixture is equal to the 0 0.100 molar divided by 5.5 which is equal to 0 0.01 to molar. So we just found out that the concentration of acetic acid was equal to 0 0.0182 molar and we know from what was given in the problem that the concentration of acetate ion plus the concentration of acetic acid is equal to 0 0.100 molar. So, if we substitute this number in here, we get the concentration of acetate ion plus 0 0.0182 molar is equal to 0 0.100 molar. So, the concentration of acetate ion in that solution is equal to 0 0.0818 molar. Okay, so we know the concentration of our two components. The acetic acid concentration is that the acetate ion concentration is that, and that acetate ion will come from sodium acetate. The other question then was, how do we make this solution? Well, if you remember from the problem, we have to make three liters of the solution using 0 0.200 molar acetic acid and 
and 0 0.500 molar sodium acetate. Those are our, our, our starting um, solutions that we're working with. So, to find how much acetic acid we would need, we found our concentration, that is we need 0 0.0818 moles of acetic acid per liter of solution. We need three liters of solution. That's what we were asked to give. Oops, I have to pay attention here. You let me make an error here. This isn't the concentration of acetic acid. This isn't the concentration of acetic acid. This is the concentration of acetate ion we need coming from sodium acetate. Okay, now continuing. And we know that we get one mole of acetate ion from one mole no, one mole of sodium acetate will um, dissolve to create one mole of acetate ion so this should really be acetate ion here if we're being consistent and if we multiply that out, it will tell us how many moles of acetate ion that we need. So, that is, when we multiply it out, 0 0.2454 moles of sodium acetate that we need to make our solution. So, Continuing our calculation, we said that we need 0 0.2454 moles of sodium acetate. We have a stock solution that we said has 1 liter of that stock solution. contains 0 0.500 moles of sodium acetate, right? And then working in the lab, we're going to measure this in liters, so if we multiply, there's a thousand milliliters per one liter, because that's the way, right, that's the unit that a graduated cylinder, what we would use to measure this, that's the unit a graduated cylinder would be graduated in. So we have to always think of really doing these problems. And when you do that, you find out that it would take 491 to three significant figures, milliliters, of our sodium acetate stock solution. Okay? Now, what about the acetic acid? We said we need 0 0.0182 moles of acetic acid per liter of the final solution. We're going to make three liters of that solution. And we know that one liter of the stock solution of acid contains 
zero point two zero zero moles of acetic acid. And then again we are going to measure out that in one thousand milliliters is one liter. We're going to measure it in a graduated cylinder, so we need to convert to milliliters. And that then says that we will get we will need 273 milliliters of the acetic acid stock solution. So, to make that final solution, we will take those two numbers. We need we will measure out 400 and 91 milliliters of the sodium acetate stock solution. We will put that in a volumetric container. We will measure 273 milliliters of the acetic acid stock solution. And we will put that in a volume metric container. And now, here's the part, right? Here's the tricky part. Remember, it is the final volume that is important. And so we always focus on the final volume. So, our final step is always add water to reach the final volume, in this case, 3.00 liter mark of our container. That is always, 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 right? Add water to reach the final volume of our container. That's always the last step when we're making a solution whose concentration is given in molarity. HEPES is one of a variety of complex biological buffers. In this case, HEPES stands for 4 2 hydroxyethyl one piperazine ethane sulfonic acid. It's much easier to just say HEPES. These buffers are complex organic molecules that create good buffering solutions without affecting the um, ionic strength of biological um, in biological research. So that's why they're used fairly commonly. In this case, HEPES looks something like this. There's a nitrogen, a nitrogen, there's a chain with a hydroxyl group on this end, and there's a chain with a sulfonic acid group on the other end. So you can see it is much easier to just talk about heapies than to draw a structure or a formula for the compound. So we will talk about the acid form of heapies as the H heapies. And we will talk about the base form of heapies as being the Heapies minus. That's the easiest way to deal with it in a problem. You can also go back to sort of standard nomenclature 
where the acid form is just HA and the base form is A minus. That's shorter and easier to write. But we have to remember that in all cases we're still using the pKa here, which is 7.48. These formula weights for the base form, whichever designation you use, and the acid form, whichever designation you use. Okay, so now to work our problem, to save space we will use the, the abbreviated form. So we have an equilibrium. H A, right? The acid form of HEPES is in equilibrium with the hydrogen ion in solution and the conjugate base ion, which is the basic form of HEPES. And we said that the Ka, right, once given, is that the Ka, well, the pKa is 7.48, so the Ka is equal to 10 to the minus 7.48, right, which is equal to 3.31 times 10 to the minus 8th. Okay? Now, it says we want to make a buffer with a pH of 7.00. So from what we've done before, we know that if the pH is 7.00, that the concentration of hydrogen ions at equilibrium is going to be 10 raised to the minus 7.00 which is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the minus 7. Okay, and if we express our Ka, right, that's the Ka, so the Ka which is a number we know, which is equal to the concentration of hydrogen ions times the concentration of the basic form in solution divided by the concentration of the acid form in solution. In that, we know this, which is this, Right? The hydrogen ion concentration is this, and the Ka is this, which means we can find that ratio, which is always the important ratio when we're dealing with a buffer. So, if we take all that and substitute, we end up with our Ka, which is 3.31 times 10 to the minus 8 minus, come on, make my minus, is equal to the concentration of hydrogen ions, which is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 7 times the concentration of our basic form in solution divided by the concentration of our acid form in solution. So, we get zero point three three one is equal to that ratio. And so there's one of our equations, right? which we can multiply out and find that 0 0.331 times the concentration of the acid form at equilibrium in solution is equal to the concentration of the base form at equilibrium in solution. Right? Now, if we go back and look at the problem, 
The problem says we want to make a buffer with a total concentration of 0 0.600 molar, right, is going to be equal to then that sum, the concentration of all forms of heapies in solution. So that becomes our two equations, one equation, two equations, with the same two unknowns. This is the acid concentration at equilibrium in solution. This is the acid concentration at equilibrium in solution. This is the base concentration at equilibrium in solution. This is the base concentration at equilibrium in solution. Two equations, same two unknowns. We can solve that. We can start by just substituting. Right? We can substitute this for this in the equation. So we have 0 0.600 molar is equal to the concentration of the acid in solution, right, plus 0 0.331 times the concentration of acid in solution at equilibrium. Right? So we end up with 0 0.600 molar is equal to, remember there is a 1 in here that's implied, so we have 1 plus 0 0.331 So that gives us 1.331 times the concentration of the acid in solution is equal to 0 0.600 molar. Okay, so what did we just say? We said that 0 0.600 molar is equal to 1.331 times the concentration of the acid. So 0 0.600 molar divided by 1.331, which is equal to 0. 451 is e molar is equal to the concentration of the acid in solution. Right? But we also said that 0 0.600 molar is equal to the concentration of acid in solution plus the concentration of the basic form in solution. This number is this number. So we can substitute that. We get 0 0.600 molar. That is equal to the 0 0.4 Five, one molar that we solved for previously plus the concentration of the basic form. So 0 0.600 molar minus 0 0.451 molar is equal to concentration of the basic form which was equal to 0 
1.149 molar. So now we know in our final solution we know the concentration of the basic form we need and we know the concentration of the acidic form we need. Those are the two concentrations we need to make this solution. So, the last thing we have to do now is describe how we're going to make this solution. So, we need 0 0.451 moles of our acid form of heapies per liter of our final solution. And we're going to make two liters of that solution. That will tell us how many moles of that acid form we need. The problem tells us, if you go back and read it, that there are 238 grams of the acid form is one mole of the acid form. And so that means when we multiply it out, we need 215 grams of the Heapies acid form to make our solution. Right? Now, we need 0 0.149 moles of the base form in solution for each liter of our buffer solution we're making. We're still making 2 liters of that. But this is the sodium salt it's given. So we have to remember that when that sodium salt dissolves, right, that one mole of the sodium salt dissolves to make one mole of the basic ion in solution. And then that sodium salt, there's 260.29 grams of the sodium salt of heapies per one mole of that sodium salt. And when we multiply that out, we get 77.6 grams of the sodium salt of heapies. So we need to use that much of the acid form, that much of the basic form. So, when we're, what do we do? Right, we go to the balance and we weigh 215 grams of heapies. We weigh 77.6 grams of the sodium salt of heapies. Then if you remember, we dissolve those in water 
less than our 2.00 liters that we want our solution to end up and then and this is the most important it's always the last thing we add water with stirring to the final 2.00 liter volume. We always end up, we always end up ending with our final volume. Whenever you're making a solution where the concentration is given in molarity, it's the final volume of the solution that's most important.